trying to clear up what we mean uh, by, uh, I think, power you understand, energy per unit time, but intensity is a power per unit area, and does it matter? So to give you a physical understanding of why intensity matters, let's think about this. We're going to do it non-mathematically first. This little heating element that I showed you before, um, this is emitting, it's actually uh, infrared EM waves. Okay? So you saw that big spectrum. The part that you can see is uh, from 400 to nano 700 nanometer wavelength. If you go beyond 700 nanometers and go to sort of a micron or 10 microns, but before you get to microwave, you're in the infrared. It just means longer than red, beyond red. And we experience it as heat. Okay, so when you have a radiant heater, it's sending a lot of infrared light. You look at this and say it's not that bright. But that's because you're only seeing the tail end of its emission. You're seeing the orange and the red, sort of yellow and red. Most of the light is in the infrared, and you can feel it warm your face, right? You can feel it hit you, okay? So let's, so let's pretend that's 100 watts. It's probably roughly 100 watts, okay? So now, can you feel the infrared on your face, anyone? No, no, no. When I block it, do you feel a change in temperature when I block it? No. That's because if we wanted to calculate the intensity, when we get out here, then it's doing a huge area, right? So it has a low intensity, because intensity, we're going to do the math in a minute, but it's power per unit area. Okay. So by the time we get that little radiant thing all the way to you, that's like multiple meters in a giant sphere. But what we can do is put that same heater in a parabolic mirror like this. And we'll do the geometrical optics next time, or next year, next semester, next year. Okay? And then this causes all the light to reflect like this. Whoa, like that. So now all 100 watts, instead of going in all directions, now 100 watts um, is just going that way. So it's a smaller area. Right? So this was the area of the entire sphere around the thing. This is the area of just this beam. And what's the area of the beam? It's the size of this uh, hole right here. So this beam keeps coming out like this. So the intensity in this beam is bigger. And if you don't believe me, here it comes. Are you ready to experience the beam? So now do you feel it now? Yes. Do you feel it now? No. See, it turns off. See how collimated it is, right? So there you go, warming up your face. And now do you feel it? Yes. But then as soon as I'm just optically away, it's gone, right? And then they feel it. And I don't know how far out I can go and feel it. Let's get some of the back row Joes back there hiding from me. Oh, I see one that I know back there. Right. So can you all feel it in the, the cheap seats there? You guys, Jonesians hiding. Can you feel that? It's probably too far. Just say yes. Just say yes. I'm your magister. Say yes. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. Thank you. Very good. Okay. But the front row, you can definitely feel it. And it's the same amount of power as it is here. These are both the exact same 100 watt heating element. All it's doing is concentrating it down to a small area. And the thing you actually usually feel is not power, it's usually uh, intensity. Power per unit area is what actually matters. So that's why, this, is, this always scares me. If I'm going to die, it's going to be this plug. It's eventually going to get me. Um, so that's just the uh, example of uh, that intensity matters, not power. So now let's look at like, how we calculate it. Okay? Those two are the same power different intensity. 